All right, guys, let's see how quickly we can get this next bit going on. One of the things that we haven't looked at at all just yet is our site plan. So I'm going to open our site plan. <clears throat> Obviously, things are looking really, really weird right now. Um, they start with we're drawing at the wrong scale. So our site plan for this project does not need to be 1 to 20. Uh, it only needs to be an eighth of an inch. So we'll change that. You can see all that uh, automatically updates. I don't want this to say just site. So I'm going to right click, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> click rename, caps lock. I actually want to call it the site plan. Now to get my, I don't want to see my elevation keys like at all. I don't mind the column grids being there. They're going to be pretty helpful here in a second, but I don't want to see elevation keys. So I'm going to, high, I'm going to select the square part of the exterior elevation key, right click, hide in view, category. That turns off all my elevations only in this view. <clears throat> okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we need to place some property lines on here and because we need to situate... Okay, sorry about that. A little work uh, work message. Uh, we need to send a... Uh, we need to put a... Uh, put the property lines on here so that the building can be properly located on the site. Now, instead of moving the building around relative to the property lines, we're going to move the property lines just because it's easier to do for the purposes of this assignment. So there is a tab. If, if, you, if we're on our annotate tab, we go two tabs to the right, and that's massing and site. We go to the far right-hand side, and we'll see property line. That's what we want to do. We want to draw a property line. We want to create by sketching. <clears throat> and this is the exact same mode that we use when we're dealing with uh, creating roofs or floors or things like that. So it's that same general principle. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to start in the bottom left-hand corner, and it's just some arbitrary amount. Again, I'll, pay, I'll place it now, and I'll fine-tune its placement in a moment. I'm going to start there, and I'm going to go to the right, and I'm going 126 feet. I'm sorry, it's supposed to be 126 foot 6. Uh, we'll fix that in a minute. Don't panic. I'm going to go up. What do I have here? 75 feet. Now we're going to go back in a straight line until we get this alignment grid to show up. Close it off. Now we can actually make that uh, correction for the 5 inches. So if I use my modify tool, select that one little line, move, Let's go that way, six inches, problem solved. Okay, <clears throat> done, happy. Click OK, or finish edit mode. Now we have a property line that's running around our property. <clears throat> to help us get this position properly, I'm actually going to place some dimensions. So I'm going to come up to the top of my application window, and here's my aligned dimension tool. I'm going to click on the top property line and grid A, grid F, and the bottom property line. To accept this dimension string, I'm going to left click just somewhere out in empty space. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Apparently something's going around. I hope I don't have it too bad. I'm going to click on the far left hand property line, grid one, grid six, and the far right hand property line. And to accept this dimension, I'll just click somewhere out in space. And just to have it all here, I'm going to click the outside property lines in both directions, just so we have that information present. And you know what? Instead of having these dimension lines kind of running right through the middle of the property, pull those away, and I'm going to pull that up. I don't want to snap here. There it is. There's a snap. Grab that. Click and drag until it snaps. There we go. <clears throat> now to put these actually in their proper spot. I'm going to highlight or I'm going to select the property line. And you can see the dimensions that I can change that will move the property line around. Those are all the dimensions that are highlighted and now blue. So on this bottom corner here, this one I want to read 24 foot 9. And you can see how everything shifted around that. And there's there's a bit of a rounding error, I think, in, in 
what I have in my PDF example versus what is being done in this video, possibly even in class. Um, okay, this next one, this distance here, I don't know what you have on your plan, but it needs to read 25 foot 6 and 1 half. <clears throat> And I think I think we're good enough because the the discrepancy between what I'm showing on the video versus what I have in my handout uh, that I have posted is only a quarter of an inch. I'm not really going to panic over that. Uh, but you can see how dimensions moved around a little bit, so I'm just going to want to align these up. I want my overall dimensions to be outside my my in between dimensions, locating the building there. Okay. <clears throat> So there's my there's my site plan, <clears throat> and to actually place this on a sheet, which is like just as simple as everything else we've done, I'm going to highlight. I'm going to open my site plan drawing or my site plan sheet, and just drag and drop my site plan. I'm going to leave myself a little bit of space here, but I'm going to tuck this up up to the top of the sheet and over on the right hand side. <clears throat> okay, back and open my site plan. Um, I'm going to add some topography to this uh, to this project. If I look at my general 3D view, this whole thing is just floating out in space. I'm not a real fan. So on the site plan, in my view, I'm on the massing and site tab and I'm going to click topo surface. This is almost like being in sketch mode, but instead of drawing lines, you're actually just placing dots. <clears throat> and I want to start with these dots at minus six inches. And I'm going to snap one dot on each corner of the property. Then I'm going to use my modify tool. I'm going to select the top two dots and move them up five feet. I'm going to select the left hand two dots and move them to the left five feet. <clears throat> I'm going to select the bottom two dots. I'm going to move them down five feet. I'm going to select both of the right hand dots and I'm going to move them five feet to the right. <clears throat> now you can select these individually and you can move them independently one of each other, but if you select one and you can even drag them around, if you do, you get some very unusual results. And these points are actually defining the, the extents of where the ground is in your model uh, and you can see that's kind of an unusual funky shape I really don't want that I want something nice and pretty and square and it's nice and even I will click finish surface and when I go back to my 3d view I now I'm actually sitting on the ground and yes it's dirt and it's ugly <clears throat> let's take a brief moment and let's fix that and this doesn't matter if we're in our 3d view or if we're in our uh, uh, in our site plan view. I want to select my, my topography and I want to change the material. Right now it says by category. So let's open up this so I can get to my material editor. <clears throat> this is where things take an interesting twist. The very first thing I'm going to do select this middle button and say create new material <clears throat> and it, right here it says default new material and that's fine. Right click Rename. Let's turn my caps lock off. Grass. <clears throat> so there's grass. Now we need to modify the appearance of this material. And to do that, I need to load some additional stuff. So I'm going to open my asset browser, which just gives me all kinds of different things. Uh, it's just like a family. Um, these are the materials that live in this, uh, in this file. They're not all the materials that are available for us to use. So I'm going to open my asset browser. I'm going to pull this over this way so that you don't uh, miss out on this. And up here in the top, I'm just going to type in grass. <clears throat> and there we go. A dark rye grass. And the way to apply all this, all the, the qualities of this material to the current material I have selected over here, which is grass, is just a double click. Boom. There it is. Close. So there it is. Now, instead of appearance over here, I'm going to come back and click on graphics for this material. 
I'm going to click on Use Render Appearance, and if I select that, that is an awfully dark green. It's too dark. So I'm going to uncheck it, and you notice that that value stayed the same. <clears throat> now I can click on the color swatch, and I can modify this color swatch so it's a little more green, not quite so yellow, and then bump him up so he's not quite so dark. Okay, that, that right there looks happy. Click OK, click Apply, click OK. It's grass when I deselect my object. Dadgummit, this happened last time too. I thought I assigned the material to that. Grass, OK. There we go, now it's green. Now it's doing what I want it to do. Okay, uh, we've got a few more things to go. Um, hopefully this will go pretty quickly, and as you can see, it's almost time for class to start, so I'm going to have to pick up where I left off after class. Uh, we'll see you guys in just a